kitchen equipment, the items that you will use in our foods lab at school or your kitchen at home to make different food. We will start with measuring equipment. Measuring equipment includes measuring spoons and measuring cups. Measuring spoons are these small ones over here, and they measure small amounts of dry or liquid ingredients. Please note that our measuring cups are larger, and they are only used to measure large amounts of dry ingredients only. That would be like flour and sugar. Our measuring spoons come in quarter teaspoon, a half a teaspoon, one teaspoon, and one tablespoon sizes in a generic measuring spoon set. A more higher quality set with additional spoons could include an eighth of a teaspoon, a one and a half teaspoon, and sometimes two tablespoons spoons. Our measuring cups come in a quarter cup, a third a cup, a half a cup, and a cup in a generic normal set. Sometimes the three quarter cup is there, sometimes it's not. Additional cups that could be in a higher level set could be an eighth of a cup. And I have seen a two cup cup before as well. Please note, the measuring spoons work for dry or liquid, but the measuring cups only work for dry ingredients. Which brings us to our next measuring equipment, which is our liquid measuring cup. The liquid measuring cup is only for liquids, and our measuring cups are only for dry ingredients. Question over here, why do we use a liquid measuring cup instead of dry measuring cups for liquids? Simple answers are, liquid is weird. It can actually build up on itself a little bit. So if we were using a normal measuring cup, it could either build up taller than the edge or actually, depending on where you got it, slightly under, and it's easy to spill. A liquid measuring cup has a spout, which will make it easy to pour, and space around the top where you don't put liquid so you can actually move it without spilling. And then each of these lines because it's clear and see-through, you can actually put your eyes right at that line and see if you have more liquid above or under than what you thought. We always use liquid measuring cups for liquids like milk, oil, water, etc. Okay, food prep equipment. This is the stuff we use to mix things together and all sorts of things. First off, we use an apron for two reasons. One, it protects your clothes from food getting splashed on it. But two, it helps with sanitation. It keeps any germs, dirt, hair that might be hanging out on your clothes from getting into the food as well. We always use an apron in our food slabs. At home, it's your choice whether to use one or not, but it is highly suggested for these two safety reasons. Another equipment piece that you could use is an electric hand mixer. It looks like this. You plug it into the wall and these beat or help mix food. This is a hand mixer version. There are also stand mixers where it has a bowl and the beaters are attached above the bowl. We use those in our food slabs more than the electric hand mixer. Next, we have a colander and a strainer. These are both used to drain liquid from food. Please note the colander is bigger. It's like a mixing bowl size with larger slit holes. And it has a base, so it stands like a bowl. You can actually put it in the sink, pour your pasta in it, and the water will come out. As long as your pasta is not small enough that it slips through these openings. The strainer is smaller. It tends to be a wire mesh. And it tends to only have a handle instead of a base. So if you stuck this right down in the sink and poured your, I don't know, maybe fruit, maybe you're washing some fruit, like blueberries, into it, you would end up getting blueberry water and whatever's in your sink on your blueberries. This allows you to drain smaller things because they will not fit through the holes in the small wire mesh. Next, we have a grater and a vegetable peeler. These are both pretty common items. The grater cuts food into different sizes, depending on which side of this grater you use. 
It could be a pyramid shaped one like this, or I have seen flat ones that you just hold in your hand with a small handle. Vegetable peelers remove the skin of fruit or vegetables. This one is just a normal handle one, and this one is shaped slightly different, but they do the same thing. Doesn't matter which kind you have. Please note, peelers and graters are both very sharp. If you rub your finger on either of them, you'd end up getting cut. Speaking of cutting, we have some cutting boards and some cutting knives we'll talk about. Please note, cutting boards, suggestions for them is use plastic cutting boards versus wood ones because the cutting board protects the counter from cuts is the reason why we use them. Plastic cutting boards are less likely to get grooves and cuts into them. And because they are plastic, they do not promote bacteria growth. Wood in and of itself with those deep grooves that are hard to clean, also wood holds on to moisture, so it can feed bacteria a little bit. Over here in this case, it's all right to use the wood cutting board because this bread isn't going to have bacteria that soaks down into the wood, whereas lemon would have lemon juice that would soak down in. Especially raw meat, I would highly suggest a plastic cutting board. Please note, over time, they can get grooves that will be hard to clean, so you do have to replace plastic cutting boards eventually. Okay, a bread knife. Has all these little teeth on it. That's called a serrated blade. What that means is you're actually going to saw back and forth to cut your bread. If you just took a flat knife and pressed down, your bread is going to get smooshed in half. So a bread knife is long and serrated. A lot of steak knives are also serrated so you can saw through the meat. Other kinds of knives, we have chef knives and parry knives. Chef knives would be these um, ones on the left. And the parry knife would just be this small one. Please note the parry knives are small triangular shaped ones. They cut small food, like maybe you're cutting up an apple slice into smaller pieces. Our chef knives, technically these two are more triangle shaped with space between the edge of the blade and the handle for your fingers to wrap around so you can chop on the chopping board. Please note the parry knife doesn't really have that space. Usually the parry knife is used in the air. You're just cutting your food in the air. These two on the left are more considered um, Butcher knives or cleavers, they're used for cutting meat specifically, so you can cut through bones as well. These ones are used for large food pieces and cutting them, and the parry knife is used for small food, cutting into small pieces. Our next two would be the rolling pin and the pastry blender. The rolling pin is used to flatten dough, like pie crust, sometimes pizza dough. Depending on the pizza dough, it might not work so well. And the pastry blender is a handle with these wire pieces coming off that help cut fat, like butter, into small tiny pieces and mix it with flour. This will cut it and allow it to mix all around. We use these for our apple crisp that we make in our food slot. Our next one is a ladle. It is basically a small bowl attached to a handle, so you can scoop up large amounts of liquid and then pour it into a different bowl. Can openers, of course, open cans. You would open the handle, stick it on the can, and then spin this on the back to turn this and cut through. Please note this hook right here actually is used for popping off bottle tops, or helping remove the can top once it's been opened. We have here what we call the rubber scrapers, sometimes called rubber spatula, that are used to scrape the bowls clean. Like maybe I made a cake mix and it's in a bowl and I want to scrape out all of it to make sure I get every last bit into my cake pan. These are great for that. They are made out of plastic and sometimes silicone that 
are not to be used with high temperatures. So be careful not to use your rubber scraper in the fry pan on accident. In the fry pan, you need to use what's called a turner, sometimes called a spatula, sometimes called a pancake flipper. Depends on who you're talking with. But these are made of higher heat resistant plastic that you can use in a fry pan, which has higher heat or a skillet to flip or turn or stir food in there. Please be careful not to get these mixed up in our food slabs. Cooking and baking equipment itself. We have thermometers. The meat thermometer you can actually stick into the center of a piece of meat to see if the internal temperature of the meat has made it to the safe level to kill bacteria that could make you sick. And then there's thermometers like this one that you can actually put in the oven to double check and make sure the oven temperature is working correctly. They also make these for refrigerators and freezers, so you can double check and make sure those temperatures are accurate as well. We have a blender as a kitchen appliance that you can use. It blends and chops and mixed food together. Please note these only work well with liquids, and it's just you put the liquid in first, and then your other ingredients. Maybe I was making a smoothie, I'd add my milk. And then I'd put maybe my strawberries and bananas and ice and then mix it. The liquid needs to be down by these blades to make it work. Additionally, make sure the lid is always on whenever you use it, otherwise that liquid will splurt everywhere. An easy tip for cleaning blenders is after you are got your food out, fill it a quarter to maybe a halfway with nice hot water, add a little bit of soap, put your lid on, and then blend it a little bit and the soapy water will splash around and get around the blades and help clean it out really good. You may also have to afterwards use a sponge to clean it a little bit better, but that gets the majority of things out. Okay, different types of pans. We have a fry pan. Please note the sides of the fry pan are short and it's pretty wide and usually round. This allows us to cook things in here and be able to stir and get underneath and flip it well. If it had tall sides, our turner would be difficult to get underneath. We use these to make omelets in our fax 6th grade, and we use the blenders to make salsa in fax 6th grade. We have two different types of baking sheets here. The technical name for this baking sheet is the jelly roll pan. Most people just call this the cookie sheet. I tend to just call it the baking sheet. They have an inch or less tall sides, which keeps things from rolling off when you cook. Our technical name for these ones is the cookie sheet, where it's just flat. The, the sides aren't there, so if I put anything very liquid on here, it would just roll off and get all over in my oven. But cookies usually are pretty solid. They don't roll around, so you can put them on here and cook them without worrying about the sides. We use these in the food slab at school. Our next kind of baking dish is a casserole dish. It's got pretty tall sides, usually two to three inches deep. A lot of them are glass, but there are metal ones too. This is where we would put maybe our lasagna or something you might be well known with is funeral potatoes, cheesy potatoes. So you can put that in here, put it in the oven and bake it for an extended period of time. Because of how deep it is, it usually takes at least a half hour to an hour to cook anything in these kind of dishes. Back to pans that we use on our stove, we have what's called a saucepan with much taller sides than our skillet, which means it's going to be very difficult to flip things in here. We're usually going to be using liquids in these pots and pans so we can cook soup or make sauce for spaghetti or something in these. They often come with lids. Be careful of the handles of these and the skillets so they aren't hanging off the edge of the stove. Cleaning equipment. Often there are dish drainers. This side has a slope open edge. You put it over the edge of the sink so that when you wash dishes you can put them in here and air dry and the water drips off and rolls into the sink. 
And then there are drain stoppers that you plug the drain with so you can get nice hot soapy water for scrubbing your dishes with. Please note, they need to be put in right side up. This black part on both of these is a rubber seal that will seal in the sink to prevent water from getting through. If it's put in upside down like this, you might have a hard time getting it out, especially these ones. Other cleaning equipment are dish towels. These are bigger than dish cloths. Cloths tend to be square. Dish towels tend to be rectangular. Dish towels are used for drying dishes, where the dish cloths are used to wipe down counters and sinks and clean up other messes. Some people use these for sponges to clean their dishes with. Depends on the person. Those are some basic kitchen equipment pieces that we will be using and their intended purposes.